the aforementioned WWE Draft coming to you July 19th on the very first live episode of SmackDown. It's going to be great. I love the move. Uh, they broke the news on WWE.com first thing Monday morning, which is great because the website was getting a lot of traffic anyway, obviously coming off the pay-per-view right before Raw. So there was no better time to uh, break the news than right then and there. People have been wondering for weeks when the draft would be held ever since the news of the brand split broke about a month ago. We've really been in the dark. Um, the wrestlers, management for the most part, the fans especially, of course, the fact that we really haven't heard anything else about when the draft was going to be held. But now we know July 21st, the first episode of SmackDown, live on Tuesday nights. And it's a big get for the blue brand, too, because ever since the inception of the draft, even going all the way back to 2002, we had our first ever draft in WWE, the first ever draft in WWE, it was always held on Raw. There was never a time where it was held on Raw, and then the other half was held on SmackDown. The only other instance where I can recall that ever happening was in 05, when we had the draft lottery, and it wasn't held in one night, but people would switch from show to show, and Batista would show up on SmackDown as World Heavyweight Champion, of course, John Cena, the famous moment showing up on Raw as WWE Champion. Moments like that. Um, I feel like that was the only time that wasn't really a draft held on SmackDown. Those people just getting drafted from Raw to SmackDown and then showing up on SmackDown. So other than that, we have never had a draft on SmackDown before. And like I said, right off the bat, it makes SmackDown feel relevant and important again and must see. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Like I've said before, I talked about it in that little 20-minute audio piece I did right after the news broke of the brand split. If you go to the archive audio section here on the website and go to other, um, it's right there talking all about the brand split and my thoughts on it and how it's going to work out, pros and cons, blah, blah, blah. But um, I, I did talk about that in the audio piece, how much I love the draft from the beginning of when I was a fan. I started watching in April of 2008, and the first draft that I was a fan for was June of 2008, and I just love the idea of it. Of course, this will not be you know, the exact same thing because we do not have brands currently. So it's not like we're going to have members of both brands battling each other for a draft because we don't not we don't have currently, you know, members of each brand because there's no brands right now. So but I do like the way they are going to be doing this and I know people have asked about this and have suggested this and I thought this was the way that they were going to do it. Um, I, apparently they're going to have a Raw GM and a SmackDown GM obviously, but they're going to be doing their draft picks. And when they talked about it last night on Raw, they really hit it home. They aired a bunch of commercials, put a bunch of interviews up on their website talking about um, people that are going to be drafted from Raw to SmackDown, which brand do they want to end up on, blah, blah, blah. I could certainly see them doing something similar to the O2 installment of the draft, which you can watch on the network, by the way. I did a couple months ago. It's not a great show, just a forewarning. But uh, it is an interesting concept that is different from the draft that maybe most fans are used to, that I was a fan for when you have Raw and SmackDown, the members of each brand, battling each other for a draft pick. That makes, I mean, I, I and even in storyline, that never really made any sense because every Raw guy could win, leaving SmackDown with no draft picks whatsoever. So I actually kind of like this way that they're going to be doing it instead. It feels more realistic, like an actual draft, like an actual sports draft, like the MLB draft, NFL draft, what have you. It makes a lot more sense this way. We still have no idea who's running Raw or SmackDown in recent weeks. We've had the returns of Corporate Kane, Teddy Long. We had John, John Laurinaitis come back last night. Of course, none of those guys will presumably be running Raw or SmackDown, which is probably for the better. We've seen them run each show before, so it's kind of you know dead in the water. Um, hopefully, I mean, we get a new fresh face. I mean, Shane McMahon said last night, you know, a new fresh face running Raw or SmackDown representing the new era. And if it's not Shane or Stephanie, if neither of them are in charge of either show, I don't know what you do with either person. I would love to see Shane stick around. Um, I did you know, suggest to someone yesterday, I know this is not the first time that this is brought up as a possibility, maybe Daniel Bryan gets brought back in the GM role. I know he doesn't want to be really near wrestling right now, having just retired a few months ago. But it'd be cool to see Daniel Bryan in an authority, David, in an, an authority figure role. Um, he did run Raw for a night, the night after Survivor Series, when the authority were ousted out of power in 2014. So that would be cool to see, and he, run, and he ran Raw very well from a storyline standpoint. So it'd be cool to see him in power and running Raw or SmackDown. Preferably SmackDown. You know, SmackDown was Daniel Bryan's baby almost for a majority of his career from 2011 up until he retired. He wanted to become a SmackDown exclusive guy, almost bringing back the brand split himself and just kind of doing then a soft brand split that had been rumored for a while. But that being said, um, I think, you know, I think it's great. So hopefully we get new fresh names in charge of Raw and SmackDown as the GM sooner rather than later. I assume they're going to be revealed right before the draft. And until then, we will get returns of former Raw and SmackDown GMs. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see... I don't know. Anyone that's currently in the company. Obviously, Teddy Long is on good terms with the company. Maybe Eric Bischoff. They just put out a DVD for the guy. It would shock me if he didn't show up at least once. 
I could see Mick Foley showing up. I could see especially Vicky Guerrero, who shows up to all the live events in Texas anyway. I know she's busy with other stuff right now, but wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Um, but still, even people like that, it's cool to see those former, you know, former names return, former faces that had ran that had ran Raw and SmackDown. But it'd be a lot better if we just had a fresh face running either show, um, so it doesn't really feel like a retread of the Attitude Era as opposed to the new era, which would you know, which would be represented. But like I said, the WWE Draft coming your way July nineteenth on the first ever live episode of SmackDown on Tuesday nights. It's gonna be stacked. I like the concept. I like the way they're building it up. Um, the draft was always my favorite night of the year, one of the most exciting nights of the year, so I can't wait for the upcoming draft on July 19th.